Madagascar separated from India 80 million years ago and has remained in isolation ever since. This separation has led to many species of animal that are endemic to the island and many common animals on the mainland not being found here. Once upon a time, around 3 million years ago, South America was just like this, being a home for weird animals that had evolved differently to everywhere else. Except unlike Madagascar, the separation was continent-wide, allowing these unique animals to reach much larger sizes. There were giant sloths that could grow to 5 meters tall and giant armadillos the size of a car. Armadillos, sloths and anteaters belong to a group of mammals known as Xanathra, which means strange joints. This group of animals is not closely related to most extant species of mammal and is thought to have converged from a common ancestor in the Cretaceous when the dinosaurs were still around. They are considered to be one of the most primitive placentals and have the lowest mammalian metabolic rate. Xenarthrans evolved in South America and the slightly favoured view on their evolution, supported by some DNA evidence, is the proposition that they should be in the clade called Atlantogenata. This would group them with the African mammals like elephants and aardvarks that are also not closely related to most mammals. It is thought that Atlantogenata was separated from the other placentals together when Africa and South America were connected to each other. When these two continents also split about 100 million years ago, the Xenarthrans went with South America, while the rest of Atlantogenata stayed in Africa. Subsequent to these continental splits and with the extinction of the dinosaurs, South America found itself in isolation with no land bridges to other continents and where it would remain for millions of years, and with its own unique set of animals evolving in different ways. One of the most interesting animals that the Xenarthran group ever produced, and that has very few living representatives, are sloths. During the Cenozoic, the time after the dinosaurs, sloths were not arboreal like today, but lived on the ground and they were also much larger. They were averagely about the size of a bear, but one individual, known as Megatherium, was elephant-sized. The largest species of Megatherium was as much as 6 meters long and weighed 4 tons, making them the largest animal in South America, and one of the largest mammals that has ever existed. Sloths diversified to fill many niches all over South America, from cold environments to forests and grassy plains to mountains. There are a series of marine sloths that had adapted to life in the water called Thalassocnus. The shorelines of prehistoric Peru were deserted and barren, meaning these sloths probably took to the ocean in search of food. There are also sloth burrows found all over the Americas, some of them being large enough to walk through upright. Similar to sloths, armadillos also had massive relatives, like glyptodont, with some species getting to the size of a car. Unlike armadillos, that are either omnivorous or insectivorous, glyptodonts were herbivorous, and possessed a mace-like spiked tail. Xenarthrans were not the only strange animals, or even mammals, during South America's isolation, as there are a whole continent's worth of animals that are often not found anywhere else. South America had its own collection of hoofed animals, called notoungulates, like Macrauchenia, that had a horse-shaped body, the feet of a rhino, and evidence of a small proboscis. Some of the smaller carnivores were called sporacidonts, which didn't have placentas and reproduced like marsupials, one of which, called Thylacus smilus, convergently evolved its own saber teeth. Perhaps this ecosystem's strangest resident were the large flightless terror birds. They were called forest rockets and played the role of large carnivore on the continent, and hadn't been outcompeted by big cats like everywhere else. The largest of these birds was called forest rockus and could grow up to two and a half meters tall. So South America had a beautifully unique ecosystem filled with very interesting animals. But as the continent started to come closer to North America, things started to change in an event known as the Great American Interchange, which is possibly one of the largest exchanges of life between different ecosystems in history. A giant sloth called Mylodontid first made it to North America long before there was a land bridge between the continents. It is thought that it swam from island to island and hopped its way across the Caribbean, which would explain why there are sloth fossils found on these islands. Sloths were quite successful in North America. One of the three meter giants was called Megalonyx from the Megalonicidae family, which is probably the same family as the currently living Colopus sloth. Strangely, the other currently living sloth, Bradypus, is not just not in this family, but not closely related at all. In fact, the two extant genus of sloth may have diverged from a common ancestor as long as 40 million years ago. Their arboreal lifestyles and somewhat similar appearance may have convergently evolved. The moment this exchange of animals really kicked off is about 2.7 million years ago, with the formation of the Panamanian Isthmus. This rejoined the continents with a land bridge which set in motion the largest and most conspicuous part of the exchange. With the biospheres clashing together, the Arctic animals from the north flooded into South America, and the Neotropic animals from the south crossed into North America. 
The Nyati animals would include ungulates like deers, horses, and also camelids, later becoming llamas and alpacas. Predatory animals like canines, bears, and felines, including the most famous saber-toothed cat, Smilodon. A species of odd-looking elephant-like creatures known as gampatheres that were common in North America at this time also cross the land bridge. At first, the exchange was symmetrical, with an equal amount of animals travelling in both directions, but very soon after, the neotropic animals proved to be far less successful. The South American animals that travelled north didn't diversify much or travel far. The forest rockets saw a short amount of success, but eventually disappeared. In addition, the exchange is thought to be responsible for many of the megafauna extinctions in the south. Some of the first neotropic niches to be invaded were predatory, with forest rockets and sporacidonts taking a sharp decline almost straight away with the habitats being colonised by cats and dogs. Eventually, the niches filled by South American ungulates also started to diminish with the arrival of horses and camelids. In the midst of the South American onslaught, the one group of unlikely animals that still did well were sloths. The Neartic animals struggled to invade the mega herbivore niches, meaning certain giant sloths like Megatherium survived to as little as 11,000 years ago. Sloths in North America also continued to live on diversifying, with many later species being endemic to the continent. Eventually, even the giant sloths would be driven to extinction, but they still left their legacy in the form of slow but cute tree dwellers. Thank you for watching. If you want to be notified of future content from me, consider subscribing.